Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. I was researching something completely unrelated yesterday, and I found a uh, chart online that somebody had made on the different power generation capacities of battleships built during World War II. And these numbers are absolutely fascinating, and it leads to a whole bunch of uh, follow-up questions. So it looked like this was uh, first posted on the World of Warships Reddit um, probably about uh, four years ago. We'll post the link to it in the description below. And uh, this is someone else's research I went through and, and checked to make sure all the numbers are, are more or less correct that I could confirm. And uh, anyway, at the end of the day, it's really interesting looking at this. The Iowa-class battleships have the highest power generation capability of any battleship that was ever completed. And that's really interesting why that's the case how like you have ships like Vanguard completed after so you have ships like Yamato that were significantly larger how did they get away with lower power generation because by the 1980s the Iowa class battleships did not have enough power generation capability for all the equipment that was on board there's overall a thousand electric motors on this ship we're standing at one of the ships eight 1,250 kilowatt ship service turbo generators. In addition to the eight of these, two in each of the four engine rooms, we also have two emergency diesel generators, each one capable of 250 kilowatts of emergency power. Now, for this chart, rightly so, the original poster did not count uh, emergency power on there, just standard power. Let's uh, quickly go over some of the ships on here and uh, some of those interesting numbers, and then we'll keep going on why some of these ships have such low numbers. So for example, King George V creates just 2,800 kilowatts of power. A single engine room on an Iowa-class battleship, how does a full 35,000 ton battleship get away with that? Uh, likewise, Vanguard, a significantly larger vessel, is only capable of 3,700 the next lowest powered ship is Yamato herself at just 4,800 kilowatts of power. Yamato is the largest battleship ever built. How does she get away with so little electrical capability? Uh, next up, you have some of the smaller ships. You have Dunkirk at the same uh, level as Yamato, even though she is uh, almost a third of the displacement, a little bit over a third. Uh, Latorio's at 6,800. South Dakota at 7,000 has the least of the American fast battleships. Uh, Bismarck, 7,900. Uh, North Carolina, 8,400. Uh, Richelieu, 9,000. And then you got Iowa at uh, 10,000 kilowatts of power. And Montana would have been at 1,250. They were going to add two more of these SSTGs to Montana to give her even more power. Remember, she's got an extra turret, so uh, significantly more power draw, and it's just a larger ship. And stacking up to modern ships, a uh, Flight 1 Arleigh Burke destroyer creates about 5,000 kilowatts of power. So a 9,000 ton ship, about one-fifth the size of an Iowa, creates half of the power. It's because of all the modern radars and, and those sorts of systems. And that wasn't enough. By the Flight 2 Arleigh Burks, they'd gone up to 6,000 kilowatts. And for the Flight 3s that they're building now, they're going to have 8,000 kilowatts of power. And that's nothing compared to a Nimitz-class aircraft carrier at 64,000 kilowatts, uh, more than six times what an Iowa-class battleship makes, and a Zumwalt-class destroyer somewhere around 78,000 kilowatts, or nearly eight times an Iowa-class battleship for a ship that's uh, well less than half, probably closer to a third of the displacement. So. How do some of these ships get away with so much lower power? American battleships use electric motors for a lot of things. Uh, for example, turning the turrets, elevating the turrets. Uh, the turrets are, are a completely electrical system. Many of these uh, other battleships that have significantly lower power are using uh, steam-powered motors to turn their turrets and do all these other major features, capstans and things like that, whereas an Iowa has a bunch of electric motors. The reason the American Navy goes to electric motors, because we're sending, we're, we're making about the same steam, we're just sending it to turbo generators to make the power, as opposed to instead of sending it to all these little steam-powered motors around the ship to make the power. 
Uh, why did we go with that? American battleships can do automatic gun laying, i.e. the guns can be slaved to the computers, and that's just easier to do if the computers are sending electrical signal to the electric motors that are turning the ship as opposed to trying to do uh, gun laying with, and interfacing with a steam-powered motor. So that is one of the reasons why the Iowa class has the most. Another major factor is our anti-aircraft guns, even down to the 40 millimeters, get power drives. Our radar systems get uh, electrical power. So for example, an SK air search radar like an Iowa class had during World War II is 200 to 250 kilowatts of power. Uh, the, the surface search radar, the SG, or Sugar George, is 50 kilowatts. Uh, the, the gunnery directors, the radars associated with the Mark 37s for the 5-inch guns, 140 kilowatts per. We've got four of them. And, of course, the Mark 8 associated with our 16-inch uh, guns is 50 kilowatts, and we've got two of those. In fact, a single gun turret on an Iowa-class battleship with everything running draws just under 1,000 kilowatts or 1 megawatt of power. So American battleships have significantly higher power draws, and so they're built in with this stuff. You can't replace these easily. They're, they're plumbed into the ship. They're down in the armored part of the ship. So the turbo generators that were installed in the 1940s were the same ones that the Iowa's were using in the 1990s. Uh, so oftentimes you'll see ships, and this is particularly true of Zumwalt, with significantly more power generating capabilities than they need initially, knowing that the equipment is going to become exponentially more uh, of a draw over the ship's career. Uh, and, and that's why you see the Arleigh Burke design has to continue to expand as we keep using that same base, uh, the, the same hull, now into its uh, third and fourth decade. The power generation capacity has more than doubled in the uh, life of the ship, and there just isn't room for bigger generators on board so likely that will be the thing that limits the growth of that platform and requires us to finally design a new type of destroyer. So, uh, 10,000 kilowatts of power that an Iowa-class battleship makes, what is that really equivalent to? That is about the same as a city of 20,000 people. In fact, craft carrier Lexington, with a relatively similar power generation capability, was used to power the city of Tacoma, Washington when, I think it was an earthquake in the uh, 1930s, knocked out the uh, power plant for the city. And you, you see that often. Navy ships will respond to natural disasters. And uh, relatively frequently, uh, you, you can find reports of them being plugged into the grid to power the city off of their own uh, generators. So another thing that you'll see on uh, this chart is that the various battleships use either AC or DC current. Direct current is uh, preferred for a lot of reasons, specifically because uh, direct current is what your house has. Just about everything uh, operates off of direct current. However, American ships are generating AC current. Uh, that, that's better for three-phase systems for, for the really high voltage stuff. And it's got a couple of other benefits. It's able to travel long distances. It is available direct from the generator. It doesn't have to go to a storage battery. The associated machine is smaller per kilowatt produced than with DC power. Transformers can easily change the voltage up and down. So we're making uh, 440 three-phase power. Well, using transformers, we can easily turn them into 220 or 110 or whatever else might be needed around the ship. And by using a rectifier, you can easily convert the AC power coming off of the generators to the DC power that you need for, say, the wall outlets around the ship. So uh, that was a brief look at the various power generating capabilities of World War II battleships and uh, why the Iowa class had the highest generating capabilities of any of these built. What are some other subsystems you'd like to hear about in future videos? Let us know in the comments section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate the support because we have to pay for all of our own power. You can support us at the link in the description below that allows you to donate to the channel. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us in the museum. Thanks for watching.